first of all, that Tech game, you know, obviously didn't get the dub, but the way that you guys competed, I mean, talk about that. That was very impressive. Yeah, first of all, very thankful for Texas Tech uh, to play us, uh, you know, and uh, we were able to get that game kind of on a short notice in college basketball terms with COVID. And, um, you know, so very thankful for them uh, for giving us the opportunity to go play. And then it was a great college basketball uh, game. You know, it was two uh, two teams uh, really good on the defensive end right now. So both teams still trying to figure it out a little bit on the offensive end. And uh, uh, it was just back and forth. You know, obviously they jumped us early. And then I was really proud of our guys' fight to hang in there. And we obviously made a run at them to start the second half. And uh, it just became a back and forth, you know, possession game. So I uh, was proud of our guys' effort and uh, proud of competing. Uh, obviously, anytime you can go on the road against a top 15 team in the country and play a one or two possession game, I says uh, things says a lot about where our program is right now and where we're headed. Um, what works for you guys in that game? You know, I think with, the, with this team, the identity starts on the defensive end of the floor, and it's been that way in our program for probably the last three or four years. Uh, everything starts on that floor. If you're going to play at Abilene Christian, you're going to defend. And uh, th this team is, is doing a great job with that. I think also with this team, we have a lot more depth than we've had before. We're able to play more guys, and I think we're able to play um, at a higher level defensively uh, for a longer period because we're playing a bunch of guys. And so this team has to continue to buy into that. Uh, that's, a, that's a special trait of this team. I think it's what's kind of making this team uh, special at this point, and, and it's an identity that I think this team needs to embrace is that we can play really uh, one through 13. You know, we, we played 13 guys, I think, in McMurray in the first half of the other day. So when you do that, when you're running guys in, and out, you can play at a higher level, um, and then uh, um, you know. But I think that's where it starts, you know. And I think Tech's the same way. It starts on the defensive end for those guys too. And so I just, uh, you know, we, you know, some people I think you know say, okay, they set the game back by 51-44 score a couple generations. But uh, for a basketball coach, when you watch the, the, the watched it live and you watch the tape, man, it was just two teams competing their butt off, and you just didn't get anything easy at the rim. You know, obviously we fouled them a little bit too much in the second half and let them score from the free throw line. But uh, if we can continue to get better on that end of the floor and continue to guard, it might be one of our best defensive teams we've had. Yeah, what kind of confidence does you know a game like that against a, a you know you mentioned Tech is shooting for a national title. You, you competed toe to toe with a potential national title team. What, what does that mean? Well, you think it would. You think our team would grow from that and have a lot of confidence. We didn't play like that the first half against McMurray. Uh, you know, coming coming back off of it. So, uh, you know, and give credit to McMurray on that. I thought McMurray was very well prepared. Their kids were ready to play, uh, and uh, you know they came out and played really well, uh, especially in the first half. So, uh, I would you would think you would think so, but you know we're we're fighting with our guys. I think was where everybody's fighting other uh, teams across the country, just trying to find some consistency right now. And it doesn't matter if you're playing. Texas Tech, Hardin Simmons, McMurray, Tarleton, uh, East Tennessee State, or Lamar here on January 2nd. We want to find consistency. There's a way that we want to play each time we go out, and the uniform that's, a, that's across the way doesn't matter to us. You know, there's a standard that we're trying to play to. So that's the message that we're trying to get across to our guys and just trying to continue to find some consistency in that. The schedule gets a little weird for you guys. You got HSU this week. I guess give me a brief. Yeah, that. you know what? I haven't dug too much into them, but obviously Brackett's done a tremendous job. Hardin Simmons has been a really good basketball program in this city for a long time. Due to COVID, uh, it makes sense to play this game. Uh, they, they literally have to come over five minutes. We can keep our student athletes safe uh, and, and we can play play this game. So I think it makes sense for both teams. They're good enough to, to uh, we're going to have to show up and play. I know that uh, a lot better than we did against McMurray uh, to, to win the basketball game. Our guys know that. I think they understand that after the first half of the McMurray game. Um, I know their guys are going to be excited to play. Uh, Chase Cobb, one of our former players, is, is one of their players, and I know he'll be excited. It's a great opportunity for those kids to come play a Division One program. And so uh, I, I know our guys go watch them play a bunch. I'm sure some of their guys come to our games and watch, so there's probably a familiar. They probably know each other really, really well. And uh, But I'm excited. Anytime you can play a team in Abilene, um, you know, I, I think it makes it makes sense. So we're excited for that opportunity. And obviously, um, you know, big game coming up on, on the horizon. Uh, yeah, and I, I guess talk about Arkansas. Yeah, you know, obviously I haven't seen them. I uh, haven't dug into them. You know, we're, we're going to treat Harden Simmons first, and then we'll move on to Arkansas. So I haven't spent any time on it. But obviously, uh, I think by the time we play them, there will be another top 25 program. I don't think they've lost a game yet. I think they're 7-0. Obviously, an incredible venue to play at, a very historic venue. A ton of great basketball games have been played there with great coaches, Hall of Fame coaches, NBA players. Uh, we've never been there. So the atmosphere won't be as good as what it would be on a, a normal uh, night. But I, I think they still are allowing fans right now, I think at 25% or something. So there'll be a lot. There'll be some energy in, in, in Barnhill, and uh, it, it will be a, it will be a great at atmosphere for our guys to play. Obviously, Arion Simmons going back home. We try to do that. Uh, let our guys uh, get the opportunity to play a game back in their home state, and Arion's going to get that opportunity. I know he's excited. Uh, then you got Christmas. We're leaving for Christmas, which probably our guys are more excited about that than maybe playing Arkansas. So uh, you know that's the focus right now. Is just get, you know this is the hard time of the year right here. Everybody's gone. Campus is gone. Finals are gone. We're done with finals. There's no academics right now. It's just straight basketball. But it, you know they miss their mamas right now. They want to get 
home and it's Christmas time and, and they need to be home, especially during this time and all that we've been through. Uh, you know, I'm excited for them to get the opportunity to go home for three or four days. So we just got to keep pushing, uh, pushing through here. Uh, what I'm excited about is a week full of practices. Uh, you know, we get to stay here in Abilene all the way until uh, we leave to go to Arkansas. So with a game in there with Harden Simmons, but we get to get, hopefully have some good practices, a, a good showing against Harden Simmons, and then we'll prepare for Arkansas.